Whether you're a business owner, blogger, freelancer, or anything in between, understanding the ins and outs of hosting is essential when you're establishing an online presence. There are a lot of things to consider when you're looking into hosting, and in this video, I hope to answer the simple question of how to host a website in 2024. Now, the very first thing you need to decide when you are looking into hosting is if you're gonna be using a website builder or a CMS. If you decide to use a website builder such as Squarespace, Wix, Shopify, or something like that, they'll typically have their own hosting. Whereas a content management system, something like wordpress.org, is going to be self-hosted, so you'll need to decide your hosting options. There are so many differences, so before deciding on a host, it's important to determine which platform suits your needs best. So if you are gonna be using a CMS, something like WordPress, then you're gonna to need to decide what kind of hosting you wanna look into. And there are a lot of different hosting types, so I'll give you a quick overview of what they are. First, you have shared hosting. Shared hosting involves sharing server space and resources such as RAM, bandwidth, and storage. It's an affordable hosting solution, but it's best utilized for small websites or blogs that expect minimal traffic. Because of the resource limitations and potential performance impact, shared hosting isn't the best choice for those looking to grow their business. The next choice is managed hosting. Managed hosting offers a hands-off experience and server maintenance. Managed hosts typically handle all security updates and patches, offer backups and staging sites, and an optimized server for your website. For WordPress users, managed hosting is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can leave all of the techie stuff to the professionals, and on the other hand, you may not be allowed to use any plugin that you want. That said though, the benefits of good managed hosting far outweigh the cons. Additionally, managed hosting is more affordable than VPS or dedicated hosting plans, ranging from a few dollars a month to around $30. The next type is VPS hosting. VPS, or virtual private server hosting, functions much like shared hosting, except you won't have to share your resources with other customers. You'll have more control over your sites, be able to scale up easier, and have definite performance enhancements. This is because each VPS environment functions separately, providing better use of resources, better security, and more customization. Because of this, VPS is suited for growing websites and higher resource demands. The downside of VPS hosting though is that it's more expensive than shared or managed hosting plans, with average pricing ranges anywhere from around $30 to $100 a month. Then we have cloud hosting. This type of hosting is different from the others, as all of a website's files are served from a series of web servers hosted in a cloud. Because of this, websites built on cloud servers are faster, more scalable, and more reliable. With cloud hosting, you have the freedom to configure your own server, and in some cases, such as Pressable, a managed solution as well. Cloud hosting is relatively affordable, with prices ranging from $10 to $100 a month, depending on the provider. And lastly, there's dedicated hosting. With this type of hosting, you'll get your own server. One of the benefits of dedicated hosting is the freedom to configure your server any way you choose. Dedicated hosting is an excellent choice for tech savvy people who know their way around a server and have high traffic requirements. The downside of dedicated hosting is the price, where you should expect to pay at least $100 a month. That said though, if you have lofty goals for your website and anticipate a lot of visitors, this is gonna be the best choice. So that is just a quick overview of all the different types of hosting. I do have a much more in-depth video if you wanna check that out. I'll leave a link down in the video description and there'll be a button floating above. I go a lot more in-depth in that video on all the different types of hosting. So check that one out if you need a little more guidance when choosing what type of hosting is best for you. But that being said, once you've decided which type of host to go for, now you need to register a domain. When it comes to registering a domain, there's a couple ways you can do this, including through a good domain register or going through the hosting provider themselves. When doing your research on which provider to go with, you'll want to check to see if they do offer a free domain name, as a lot of them do. So once you have the perfect domain name chosen and registered, now you have to choose a hosting plan. Each host is going to have different hosting plans that they offer, but one that has a lot of great values, features, and scalability that we recommend is SiteGround. They offer cloud-based managed hosting at reasonable prices, and if you're starting out, their startup plan is a great choice. With pricing for less than $15 a month, you'll get a lot of bells and whistles, including free emails, migration, SSL, and CDN, along with several security features such as daily backups, malware scanning, and so much more. So I'll walk you through just how quickly and easy it is to get started with a good hosting provider. I'm gonna use SiteGround for this demonstration, but these steps are gonna be similar depending on which host you wanna use. I'm just gonna use SiteGround since it is so quick and easy to use. So when you're at the SiteGround homepage, all you have to do is click Start Now and it's gonna show you some web hosting plans. As I mentioned before, the startup plan is really excellent and a great place to start. It comes in at just $2.99 a month and offers a lot of awesome features, such as a free domain, free SSL, free CDN, email, e-commerce enabled, 10 gigabytes of web space, and so much more. So then once you have your plan decided, you can just click Get This Plan. And from here, you can either register a new domain, or you can use an existing domain that you have. As I mentioned before, a lot of hosting providers will provide a free domain, 
So make sure you check this out before you go and register a domain because a lot of times it's easier to just register as you're signing up with your hosting. When you go to register a domain, if it's already taken, you can see that I tried really awesome website here.com. It'll tell you that that domain is not available, but SiteGround's awesome and it'll give you some options for you for things that could be available. So we'll choose one of those and we'll just continue for this demonstration. And then from here, you just need to sign up for your SiteGround account, fill in your information, put in your payment information, choose any options you want, and then you can just go ahead and continue. Now, once you have that all set up, you're ready to host. Again, this is super easy with SiteGround. So when you do get logged in, you'll just wanna click the setup site button and then we'll make a new website. Next, we'll choose whether to build our new website using a new, existing, or a temporary domain. You can use the new domain option if you wanna search and register a new domain for your site, existing if you already have a domain and wanna point it to SiteGround now, or you can select a temporary if you wanna work with a free temporary domain now, and then you can change it later. If you do that, it'll assign you a temporary domain completely free and you can use that to continue. Then next, we wanna decide if we wanna start a new website or migrate a website. If you already have an existing website, you wanna move over to SiteGround, and then you can use the migration tool to quickly and easily migrate your site over to SiteGround. If you wanna start a new website, you can select the start new website, and then if you are using WordPress, you can super easily create your WordPress site automatically on SiteGround. Starting a WordPress site using SiteGround is extremely easy, and they make this really quick for you as well. They offer a lot of tools with their WordPress starter plugin, that takes a lot of the confusion out of building a new WordPress site. And really that's all you need to know when it comes to hosting your website. Now, if you want a little more information, especially on all the steps that I covered, there's gonna be a blog article down in the video description below. Check that out, it goes a little more in depth into all these steps so you can read along and follow through it. Hopefully this video helped you when it comes to hosting a website. Before you go though, make sure you check out some of our other content and I'll see you in the next one.